Hello everyone and welcome back to Thirsty Thursday. Today we are talking about bottles. And I'll tell you, there's a lot of aspects of bottles we need to cover because when you choose a bottle, it becomes a very important part of your homebrew. Let's talk about the different colors of bottles that we have first. We have a lot. I think that my favorite color of the bottles that we have is this purple one. We also have a similar like shaped bottle that is in the red. That's one of my favorites. What about yours? Black. The black one's your favorite? I love black. What's my favorite color? Oh yeah, obviously. Yeah, I so love it. It's nice like a matte black. Well, this colors. one's a little bit fancy. I touch it by the top because it's not my favorite feel. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> this is the frosted. This always reminds me of like the holiday season. It's absolutely perfect for Christmas, especially Christmas gifts. And then let's go like, you can't have a bottle unless you have an amber bottle. Just like your classic it's amber. Your, yeah. I also always think of like the classic green, mm -hmm. which is like this, but I almost I almost like this green better. That's a dead leaf. This is called dead Or an leaf. antique sometimes it's called that too. Yeah, but look at the difference between these two greens. They're, this one's like very yellow compared I to this I think this one. is fall, this is summer. Yeah, because you're typical. The clear and green are always going to be the most economical. We have a lot of different sizes of bottles. We do. If you are doing a traditional bottle of wine, we call that a 750. Okay, so a 750 milliliter, which would be any of these. And you're going to fill about three cases of these when you do a six gallon kit. Okay, so 30, about 30 about. bottles when you do. Yes. Okay. Yes. You can go bigger. The Magnum is a 1.5 liter. I honestly did not even know that this bottle existed. Yeah, like this is in a couple well, different colors. I knew that it existed, but I didn't know how big it was. I would never held it in my hand, but it is quite a bit bigger. Yes. Compared to just your typical look at. <laughs> That's a good comparison. Yeah. <laughs> and then we also have the 375s. The 375s, I think you should always have on hand when you're bottling, because what happens when you have bottled 29 gorgeous 750s and you just have a little bit left. You can't just bottle half a bottle, it's gonna oxidize. But you can bottle half a bottle when it is a half a bottle. And you also like giving these to your friends because then you can give them to more friends, but it's yes. less wine for them yes. and more wine for you. More friend happiness. <laughs> but this is the size comparison between your stand, this is a standard 750 Correct. milliliter and this is a 375. The bottles that we're showing you here are by no means the whole list of bottles that we have. Just a sampling. Let's talk about the difference between punted versus non-punted. What does well, that mean? Well, let's describe even what we're talking about. Yeah, Okay. so a punted bottle. I have a gorgeous one right here. Perfect. See how this bottom, it's like kind of indented in? Why is that, Paula? Your, your typical bottle is flat on the bottom, okay? And I, I'm, I have a couple of things I'm gonna, I, I made a list of why we might want punted. First of all, they say it's easier to hold. Easier to hold? Well, because if you were if you were grabbing it, apparently, and you're pouring it or you're decanting it, it, it gives you a place to put your hand. It doesn't feel much easier to me, but that was one of the aspects of why you might use a punted bottle. I'm gonna call BS on that, honestly. Okay. It used to be an indicator that it was a well-made wine. Okay, so if you had a better made wine, then you would always go with a punted bottle. Oh, huh, that's interesting. Um, that isn't the case at all anymore because as we all know, you can even find well-made wines with screw-off tops anymore. Also, it has an optical illusion that makes it look a little bit bigger. So if you had a punted hock bottle versus, let me, let's do a non-punted. Um, they say it makes it look bigger. It doesn't. It doesn't really to me. Maybe a little? Like a little bit more round? I, I also know. think that the um, comparison between the colors. Is, that would be nice. Yeah. Okay. Also, it says that the, it catches, helps to catch sediment. So if you're going to have sediment, it has that little rim ridge thing in the bottom, and it will help catch it that when you are you are pouring the wine, it will not take that sediment okay. and have it splash back I can up. get on board with that. It, that I, I bought that one as well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It will chill faster because it has more surface area. So if you put it warm in a bucket of ice, which we often do to chill, oh. it will chill more rapidly because of having more surface area. They say it's easier to clean, and that's the opposite of what I've been saying my whole life, um, that I 
thought it would be harder to clean, but they say if you're using like a bottle washer where you're shooting that water or the cleaner into the bottle, it actually gives it more to move around. I also could see if you're putting a brush into the bottle, the bottom is like the hardest area to get, but if it's, it's up like up. that, then mm -hmm. you can you can use the side of the brush to clean it rather than like the bottom. So yeah, mm -hmm. that I, one I buy. I think my theory on punted have, has been debunked at this point. The last thing they say is it's easier to organize. So if, if for some reason you were um, laying your bottles down in a, in a wine cellar and you were doing more than one, then the top of one could fit could, into the could, so it's easier to organize apparently i i've never stored I also my wine kinda, that i way. also kind of want to call bs on it because that seems well what i i guess i don't have it's a wine but i've only ever done them in one one row i i don't have them multiple rows yeah. deep so i yeah i mean <laughs> Courtney and Paula, debunking, punting mix. There we go. Uh, okay, let's talk about the different types of finishes, too. On your typical beer bottle, you're going to use a crown cap. Um, so we have both the 12 and the 22 ounce beer bottles. They're both going to take your standard crown cap. Now, on a lot of our wine bottles, you are going to use a cork finish. The size of the cork is going to depend on what type of corker that you're using. We also have screw top bottles, um, and those take 28 millimeter um, caps. So you can choose whether you want metal caps in multiple colors, or what we call a poly seal cap, which is a, more of a plastic cap. They're a little bit more expensive, but they have a little bit better seat. We still don't recommend those for um, aging though. We also have different types of wine bottles, so different shapes and mm -hmm. what's that about? Aesthetics. It's all about just how it looks. Yeah, it really is because it matters, you know? Think about it, people in the grocery store, labels anymore are making or breaking a wine. Well, Jenny and I always talk about this. How do you pick a wine if you're not picking it based on the label of it? One of my favorite shapes of bottles Ooh, yes. is the Bellissima. It's just this tall, skinny little guy. And it's punted. And like, is it punted? It's got a baby oh, yeah, little baby punted. punted. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I just think it's very classy looking. What's your Agreed. what's one of your favorites? Um, I actually like the hawk bottles. The hawk? Yes. And so that's those that's ones, this right? This guy yeah, right just... here, that guy. These are all hawk. Um, and you can tell they're hawk because what I always say is that they don't have any shoulders. They just have this nice little curve here versus a traditional bottle that does have shoulders. Yeah. So the difference between the two. Yes. And the traditional bottle is called a, either a Bordeaux bottle or a Claret bottle. Um, and those all have just kind of, they come down there, they have shoulders. They're a lot more economical. So also you're gonna see a pretty good difference when it comes to colors as far as price goes and styles. I also like this guy. Yes. This is the European beer bottles. And I just really like how they're shaped. They're well, and compare cool. them to like the what we're used to. Compared to your standard beer bottle, I don't know. Pretty I just cool. Think they're kind of neat, but they do take your typical crown cap. Yes, they do. We also have Belgian beer bottles, and those are the only beer bottles that you're gonna find that we carry that are cork finish. And then they also require a uh, metal cage on the top. Very fancy. And that's what people do for champagne bottles, right? They would use an actual champagne bottle and then a champagne cork and they would have a, a metal cage on the top too. They're a little bit different, but same idea. And I didn't even showcase things that we have like the swing top bottles mm -hmm. or I didn't even showcase like the specialty whiskey bottles that we have. Oh. So maybe we'll save that for a future episode. But if you like what you're seeing, we would appreciate if you gave us a like. That would be awesome. And we will catch you in the next episode of Thirsty Thursday. Thanks!